You're wearing a thematically appropriate shirt. You didn't tell me to wear a thematically appropriate shirt. Today we're gonna to talk about some of our favorite underrated games. How do you define underrated? I say that underrated means <laughs> games that either didn't sell well or had lousy reviews and were good or not terrible. I drank too much coffee, I can't handle this right now. I, you haven't even had any beer yet. Oh my God, I know. What's your first game, Jason? I hated that game, <laughs> that game sucked. My first game was called Reduced Price. It's called Metropolis Mania 2. It is published by Natsumi. Natsumi? Who, that was the girl in Sergeant Frog. It's a small scale town builder, a city builder with a very heavy Japanese influence. And I love games with a Japanese influence. It's very quirky. And you have to go around and befriend and talk to the villagers and complete uh, quests for them in order to be able to expand on the town. My first game is Everywhere Road Trip, which is like this RPG. It's for the PS2, but you play as a car, so you like drive around everywhere and you like had collect a, different of parts. Theft Auto feel, right? No, it felt like Breath of the Wild because you could just like drive around and do whatever you wanted. And I think that's what we did instead of like doing missions and like races and stuff. We're like, just like, I'm gonna drive under the ocean and see what's there. What's on this giant rainbow bridge? And then, yeah, and it was good. Next, we have Radiata Stories. Radiata Stories, which was released by Square Enix. Square Enix. Radiata Stories was developed by Tri Ace, who does the Star Ocean games. What's kind of unique about it is that it has a 2.5D perspective, and I, you're going to have to help fill in the story. You go into the girl's room, and then the girl you're it's with story. yells at you, and she says, you can't go in there because you're not a girl, but then a guy walks out, and she gets flustered and walks away, and then there's something about kicking stuff and being a knight and like defeating a dragon. Yeah, you can go around and kick everything. That's kind of what I remember about it. It was kind of quirky and fun. My next game is Psychonauts which according to Jason was really popular at some point, but I don't remember this game ever being popular or ever hearing people talk about it. It was released in 2005 by Double Fine Productions. So you play as this kid named Rasputin and his parents were like carnival people. They weren't carnival people, they were circus performers. That's probably the way to say it. And like he runs away to go to like the Psychonauts camp where the kids like work on their psychic abilities and at first they don't let you in, but then they're like, oh, you're kind of cool and whatever. So they let you go do stuff and you like go into people's minds, into their psyches and like do puzzles and shit. And it's really interesting and it's a lot of fun and it's got a really good story. It's got a lot of character. If you haven't played it, I would definitely, it's probably like $5 on Steam. Rich has been trying to get me to play it for years and I still have it. Oh, you should definitely play it. It's a really good game. It's a lot of fun. There are parts that are a bitch. I never beat it. My next one, I'm going back in the way back machine. I hated this game. Did you ever play it? This game makes me want to vomit on okay. It's called Motor Tune Grand Prix. The motion blur, I have frame rate issues and I puke. No motion blur in this game, probably had a poor frame rate too. It was developed by Polifani Digital, who did What is the, the game? Grand Turismo games. Didn't I say the name? No. Motor Tune Grand Prix. Motor Tune Grand Prix. And it's a cartoony racing game with Hints of Mario Kart in it. Is this the car from Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It looks like it. It was released in 1996. It was one of my first PS1 games. The graphics are terrible, but at the same time, they're charming and, and fun. You go around in these cartoony races around cartoony worlds with lots of character. One of the fun things I liked about it is that you could, it wasn't an open world racer. It was you know a normal racing game but you could break it really easy and go off track and, and just be able to explore the world. It was fun. Like in the Boundary Break videos? Yeah. My next game was originally called Sequence, but then they got sued like by- Sequence? Sequence. Sequence. Like okay. a sequence of numbers, like one, two, two, three, five, eight, eleven, thirteen. Oh, they got sued by the people who made that really shitty card game in the 90s called Sequence. So now it's called Before the Echo. And it's like this RPG and you're in a tower and you have to climb it and you're like in a safe room and then you have to go do battles. But instead of like normal mechanics, it's like DDR. So there are like these three different like DDR panels and one's for attack, one's for spells and one's for defense. And then there's this weird crafting mechanic and it's a lot of fun. It has a really weird story, but there's a lot of humor and I like it for the humor. My next game is actually on Steam. 
and it's called... You don't have a physical copy of this? It's called Spark the Electric Jester. Um, I don't know who developed it. It was released in 2017. But I the, thought you said it was the guy who made the fan Right, film. I don't know the, the name of the person the who games. developed it. Okay. But the person who developed it created these Sonic fan games, which probably sounds like a terrible idea, but they were actually really good, called Sonic Before and After the Sequel, and he made a couple of other random games too. They took place between Sonic 1 and Sonic 2? And then Sonic, Sonic 2 and Sonic Before 3. the sequel took place between Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, and then Sonic After the sequel took place between Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. They felt like a natural evolution of the series, except for the music, which the guy brought in this, the, the, these really talented artists to do the music, and they have a really different feel from the other games, but they're really good. And so for Spark the Electric Jester, he wanted to try something new, kind of branch off and create his own character, and he brought over the talented musicians from the Sonic Before and After the sequel games. The game is kind of a cross between Sonic in terms of feel, because he the, the character runs really fast, and Kirby, because he gets all these power-ups that change his, his attacks. It looks like a ROM hack of Sonic, where they just replace Sonic with some random character that they drew and paint. 2012, Sega, hell yeah, the wrath of the dead rabbit. And you play the Prince of Hell, but he's like this dead rabbit skeleton, and the game starts out with the paparazzi taking pictures of him with a rubber ducky in his bathtub. And then they post it on social media and it gets 100 likes. And then you have to go around and kill all 100 of the people that liked it on social media. And it's got over but the it's top. it's still out there. It's on social media. It's there forever. I know. You kill all the people who saw it and then they can't spread it anymore. Don't you know how social media works? You just murder all the people. Over the top, gratuitous cartoon violence. Over the top, gratuitous potty humor. It had really good music too. And you should like... At least check out the soundtrack, it was really good. It was in Jason's Steam library, I don't know if it was free or some show. And my last game is called Chulip. Chulip! Also released for the people <laughs> who do Harvest Moon, not Sumi. And another really quirky random Japanese RPG where you're basically you're trying to woo this girl and in order to impress her, you go around your village and try and kiss anything and everything. And that is the whole point of the game. Like that without, garbage can. Without getting your lights punched out. Yes, the stop sign. a garbage can. Who put the rock on the train tracks? My final game is Retro City Rampage DX. It's like, okay, Grand Theft Auto 1 with like a top-down view, but it's a parody of Grand Theft Auto and like a bunch of 80s and 90s things. And for some reason, Doc Brown from Back to the Future is the person who you're doing missions for. And then they made uh, Retro City Rampage 486, which runs on a 486 under MS-DOS, and they released it on a floppy disk. Well, anyway, we hope you found something new you haven't tried out yet. Also, you can run it in DOSBox. Let us know what some of your favorite underrated games are. Let us know if you've played any of the ones we've tried out. And we'll see you again soon. Please like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. And Rich and I and Mika will see you soon. We'll see you. And there's a thing and the thing and then Toe Jam and Earl. And it's then coming out it's on gonna the we have to play it. Is it two players? Can we play double players? Multiplayer. So we will play it. And the screen splits like this. And then you go and then you get hit by the mailbox and the lady runs you over with the lawnmower and the shopping cart. Go ahead and start. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Carnies, small hands. Oh, I'm going to drink a drink and be Irish. I don't. She was an Irish, but she was in my she impersonation because I don't know what she sounded like. <laughs>